Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Bart. Here's Kuba. Hi everyone. Hailing from Explain Everything. We're super excited to provide you with today's webinar on how to create GIF with a whiteboard. Yeah, that's pretty it's, exciting. It's that interesting, right? GIFs? Well, you all most probably you know about the visual cap uh, video capabilities of Explain Everything, but GIFs? Do you use it often, Kuba? We use it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you just slash GIF and there you go. Uh, you just import GIF from many sources. But today we're gonna show you how to create your own GIFs. We'll explain everything. And we'll have fun doing that. I'm, I must admit, I use explain everything these days for almost all of my graphical tasks. So if I can share a short story with you, uh, I actually have some skills in Adobe Suite and etc. But, you know, if you know how to use explain everything for simple animations and for simple gift creation, it is so much faster, I would say. It's not as powerful as those tools, those professional tools, but at most of the task, it does the job pretty well. Does it work for you that's the same way? Yeah, yeah. I've made a couple of fun, funny gifts. So <laughs> I can share them. Uh, not with everyone, because, you know, it's uh, sometimes just a funny story. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's You can make uh, all sorts of animations with Explain Everything. And it's, yeah, you don't, you don't really need any advanced uh, skill to do that. You just need to know a couple of tips and tricks that we're going to cover today because that's that's what we want to want to do actually. that's the real purpose right yeah yeah <laughs> we just want to show you how to how a couple of tips and tricks that you can incorporate not only in making gifts because that's the today the purpose of today's webinar but also um you can use those skills in any sort of um any sort of type of content that you produce with explain everything so videos presentations yeah all sorts of all yeah. sorts of stuff. So we'll start with basics and then we'll guide you through the, uh, the advanced stuff. So think of GIFs as a short form of videos. That's the way I think about it. No audio, looped videos in a short form that you can use like outside of explaining everything. And just a few items uh, before we begin, you can try to follow our steps. Well, I'll, I promise you everything that we'll show you as an example should not take more than a minute to create by yourselves. We could do it like in seconds, but we'll go slow just to show you step by step what's the process. And we're going to share, I guess, four examples starting from simple ones. And we must use cats. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that's, I guess that's going to be gift number one. And then we will build upon those skills just to provide you with more elaborate examples. And please ask us questions as we go, because we're super happy to answer all of them. That's why we're here. Yep. So answering the first question, yes, you will, uh, everyone will get a recording of this webinar. And all these, re all these webinars that we're having are available from our webinars page on explaineverything.com slash webinars. I'll link to them. And I'll send you an email if you register and you'll get this recording too. So whenever you want, you will be able to just get back and, and see how we did this and how you can make it work for you. Yeah, yeah. But if we, let's say, go too fast during some of the examples, just let us know. We'll repeat. We're here for you to answer all of the questions. We're here to explain everything. <laughs> so why don't we begin with a simple example. And, and by the way, I'm using iPad Pro and doing GIFs, but you can go ahead and try to do the same using Android device if you like. Uh, okay, I'll cut our video feed so you can see my screen. Okay, so, so, uh, so let's say I'm now in Explain Everything and I'll start a blank project. Let's say I'll use a gray background and we promised you a cat video. So let's pull a cat that's going to be cat gif. Let's, let's put a cat into the canvas. Oh, that's interesting what happened here. So I'll change dark mode into white mode. Okay, so I'll take image from Unsplash. Remember that you have this resource here, Unsplash, that is full of 
breathtaking images you can take and and use while while doing your kiffs. So I'll try to select a cat from this resource. Just gonna jump. Yeah, yeah. You might want to turn on the uh, taps and gestures. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, I will. So you can see where I'm tapping while doing those things. Uh, hold on. Display taps and gestures. Now you see my uh, the, the places where I point with my finger, so it, it's going to be easier for you to follow my steps. So what we need is a cat, and of course I brought the canvas a picture with a background, so what we need to do is to hack around this so this cat uh, has a transparent background behind it. So what I'll do is the first trick we're going to show you today is that I'm going to use the cutout tool just to cut out the cat. <laughs> Or rather, create a simple version of this picture and by this option in Inspector, I'm going to save it to the camera roll. Why I do that? Here. Because when importing picture from the camera roll, I can actually use features of image editing tool we have and explain everything. So let me show you that. I'll bring this picture back from the camera roll. It's sitting here. And while doing that, first step before this picture appears on the canvas is the image editor where I can remove the background. And that's what I need for my cat GIF. So this image editor does not appear, does not appear when you pull image from Unsplash. And that's why I had to save it to the camera roll to bring it back again to the canvas. So now I can remove uh, that picture. So what we want to do, let's, let's, let's make it simple GIF. So cat will just appear and disappear, like, like having a look at us and then um, hiding behind the edge of the screen. So in order to do that, I just need to record a video. So I'll, I'll mute my microphone. We don't need audio for this. GIF does not have audio at all. And I'll use Zoom tool to provide some space so I can move the cat. So now you see this red frame. That's the frame here uh, that you see that will be captured in form of a video. That's actually, these are the boundaries of the video. So if I take the cut, I can do this, and this will end up in, uh, on the video. So I'll actually do that while recording. So here I'm going to hit the record button, and now I move the cut up, so it gives us a look, and it hides underneath the screen. So that's what I do. So now what happened after I finished recording all of my seven second video is that timeline opened and I can rewind and see the movement that I recorded, right? The, the cuts there. <laughs> and all we need to do is to have a GIF that looks like this, is to hit this button here. That's the button that allows you to render GIF from this short video that we created. So let me show you. I'll just tap GIF and I want to send this GIF in an email. So that's what I do. And as you see, I have a cat that is <laughs> giving us a long look. <laughs> well, the cat is on this gray background. Maybe I just want to have a white background for this GIF. And all I need to do is to use um, slide sorter. That's the lower right corner. And after pressing this button here, I can select the background. And if you want to have a white background, you can do it at any time. And render GIF again. So your cat, if you render a GIF to your email, looks like this. So that's the first example. That's the easiest example we can think of. That's a very simple animation with the hand tool that you can observe here on the timeline. But of course we can do better. So let's, let's assume we are... I'm, I'm just going to remove this, this recording from the slide. So we start fresh. 
and we don't need a cat now. Let's say we are in a position of a teacher and we want to give a feedback to a student, cheering him that he or she did a good job. So what I would like to do is to have a sign with a good job on it so I can wave it uh, in my email when emailing my student. Why don't we do that, huh? Sure. So I'll find the sign in Unsplash again. A road sign, perhaps. Let's find something decent here. That will be also easy to cut out from the background. Okay, maybe this one. So again, I'll use my little trick. So I'll, I'll save this image to the camera roll, okay? Remove it from the canvas and bring it back again so I can use my image editor. And in image editor you can crop the images, but you can also remove the background step by step like this. And this is a very, very handy tool if, if, th if you think about it. You can remove those elements that you don't like, apply, and then let's say cut out the remaining part of the image so you end up with this sign. Well, it's not perfect what I did, but it's good enough. You can improve your attempt to clean out the background by using the eraser here. Eraser has this third mode that allows you to erase even images. So I'll, I'll try to do that now and I'll just erase those elements that I don't like here. So as you see, these are uh, quite basic image editing functionalities within Explain Everything. Okay, so we have a sign, but the sign already still has something on it. We want it empty. So what I need to do is to use the same color as you see here on the sign, just put it on top of uh, what is on the sign. So what I'll do is that I'm going to do another trick. I'm, I will ask Explain Everything to take the color of the sign, as you see here, with a tool that we call, how do we call this tool? Eyedropper. Yes. That's how you can take the color from any part of the picture you have on a canvas. So I'll take the background color here and basically what I'll do, this is super simple, I will just draw on top of the sign here, like that. Removing what, what I don't need on this sign, just like that. And I will add also good job, good job. Maybe like that. Through the sign. So I'll use a different font. Maybe I want to make it bigger. I can do it easily. Align to the right. Yeah, something like this. So now if I want this uh, um, text to stick to the object underneath, I just need to do the triple tap or select everything with Inspector like this and group objects with this option. I can ungroup those objects, choose selector, select all the objects and group them together. So I can have this effect here. Okay, so it's time for GIF creation. So again, I'm going to zoom out to see this red frame here. That's what's going to be recorded. I'll take the sign out of my frame, start recording, grab my sign and do this. Hey, good job. And that's basically it. So if I play it back, that's the gift that I want to have in my email to my student. So all I need to do now, as the last time, is to hit this button here to create a GIF. And, and again, I'll show you the result of my video creation in an email. 
all, all we need to do is to wait for this GIF to render. And in no time, we'll have an end result in an email. Here you have it. How about that? <laughs> So during your presentation, uh, we had a couple of questions. So the first question I presume I, I went too fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we, we have a lot of time. So yeah. um, um, the first question, uh, or rather a uh, suggestion from Carl Heinz Martin. Hello, Carl. Uh, it's great to see you. Um, wouldn't it be easier to have the photo editor di directly in the toolbar instead of exporting and importing a photo? Y yes, it would. Mm -hmm. Although, um, so we, we kind of ha have to keep the, the UX in, in line in order to do that. It's a, I think it's a gr great suggestion um, so that we don't, you know, so that you can edit photo and go inside the image and outside of it and, and then get back inside and do some edits. So it's a thing that we, we may um, consider, I guess. Um, but for now, since it, uh, the photo editor, so the, the flow of the app is, is like that, that the, the photo editor turns on when you import a, an image, um, works like that. So that's why we did the kind of workaround, right, for, for the editor. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a legacy solution. I can explain that looking at the history. So, so when you're importing a new image to the canvas, we actually allow you to edit that image. So we, you import an image that's then later used um, uh, in your production, because that was the assumption that we were using the elements without changing them in time. So that's why the image editor was the first step. But now we relaxed those um, constraints and with global razor, you can actually edit image as you go. So if you have an image and you remove those elements, as I removed pieces of the background later on, you can remove them at any time and the explainer everything remembers the first um, state of the image when you imported it and this later stage when you edited it. So adding image editor is possible now, but it was not possible in the past. So most uh, probably image editor in the future will be available for any existing image object so you can use it to change their state during um, you know your work on the canvas remember we have this recording so we need to we needed to keep things simple at the very beginning because things change over time in the recording and the complexity of that was quite enormous at the very beginning now we can we can relax that and allow image editors in the, in the future. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. I mean, we're we're looking into some possibilities of expanding certain functionalities so so that they have like a separate views. Mm -hmm. Say like uh, we would love to have more granular control over recording. Like that's something yes. that we that we definitely want to do, and uh, and we're looking into those possibilities. So image editor in the future is a, is a, is a great suggestion as well. So. Yeah, that that that's that's what we're looking into too. So yeah, thank you for that. And um, so yeah, and there's was an, another question from Sven. Hi Sven. Hi Sven. Uh, I didn't catch the name. Was it iDrop? But that's just another tool that's perfect for doing on the fly edits. So if we could just go through that again, the iDropper. Yes. Yeah, the color. Sure. Sure. So, no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely agree. It's a great tool. So it's just, uh, it's a kind of a port from uh, like uh, image editing software. It's a usual solution you get like in, in the Mac preview, Adobe and so on and so forth. So we just, we knew that um, in some situations you want to have this ability to recreate the exact color from your branding, school logo, whatever you need, and we wanted to, to have you to have that. Um, wanted you to have that control over what what are the colors that appear in yeah. the, um, on your screen on your explain everything project. And you can find this within the color picker of any tool. So now I'm in the draw tool, right? 
and I can choose the color and you'll see it here, you find it here with this plus icon. So when you tap it, you can select color from this color selector here or just use with this tool any color that you have uh, on the canvas. So now I can easily choose a color, right? And with this color I can say, let's say create artificial background. So this is an object, I want this color that I selected, which is now in a custom color palette, to go behind my picture, let's say, and by this create nice background that is very similar to the background of the picture that I put to the canvas. So it's a very neat tool. That, that's why I suggested expanding everything as a whiteboard it can be used to, uh, to replace some graphical tools that uh, you might use in your work. And this is actually something we do quite a lot. Even when we are creating like, you know, simple web graphics or those uh, webinar information graphics, we do it in expanding everything. Right, so the, the thing is that uh, all these color management things are, you can find them in the color picker. So we, I think we can go through that uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit. So every tool uh, retains those colors. So you don't see them uh, right now, but regardless of what the tool are using, if, if it's a text tool or the highlighter, they all have access to the same color pickers, right? So you can set them up and they will stay as uh, like like you said them in the in the project so um, in order to create your own palette you just tap on the color picker inside the menu Bart will show that in a second mm -hmm. um, say like the top one and it opens a menu right uh, there you go you just tap it again and it opens and so in order to add additional so on the sorry uh, in the top part of the screen you said custom color palette so down below there are predefined colors that you can select from for quick access that's here and if you want to add a new custom color you just tap on the plus and select from the palette or you can just scroll um, left and right um, if you added them before yes so, and they stay there so and, I have a good yeah. selection of colors here because I used that in the past Right, so, so that's how you, you add a, your own set of custom colors to the project. And the project will retain those mm. for each tool. So, are you ready for example number three? <clears throat> oh, I definitely am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do a white background again. And let's do a moving um, um, good job. Let's say well, this is going to be good job again because let's say that's the, that's the scenario where we're sending a student our feedback and email and we want this not to be boring good job in a black color, rather jumping letters in different colors. How about that? Sounds awesome. So what I'm going to do is to, because now I put good job as a text object, so I cannot really use letters separately but I can kind of go around this by cut out tool and remove those letters one by one, but I can even go do, do something uh, smarter here. I can try to use the fill tool in order to create new color by just tapping letters. And what happens here, this is important to understand, is that when I fill color to this G letter here, it actually creates new object that once disconnected, I can use separately. So every time you fill object, it's actually not even filling object with a color, it's actually creating a new object with the selected color. So that's why I can go wild here and do those letters in different colors. Good jaw, maybe yellow, I need yellow. Oh, cool. Okay. And if I remove... I think we got disconnected. Oh, are we good? Can you hear us? All right, yeah. Yeah, are okay, you? okay. If I do that, remember that those objects, if you fill an object with color, the objects are connected. So if I want to use those letters separately, I need to select all of those objects. 
and ungroup them. And by that, I can use those objects separately. So all I need to do is now create my video again. So let's say that's a frame that I need. Good job. I'll hit record here and use a hand tool to move those letters. But of course, I'm not going to move all of them at the same time. You can go easy with explain, explain everything because then we'll uh, uh, stack another layers of recordings of, on top. So I'll hit record here and I'll just move G and stop my recording. That's the four, four second recording that I did. Now I can rewind to the very beginning, hit recording again, and move O. So as you see what happened is that Explain Everything played the previous movement and I added another one. And I can continue doing that, recording again and again, to more, to create more sophisticated effect. I can even try to move two at the same time during next try. You see the point here, this is, you don't have to do it at the same time. You can go multiple times and create very interesting, simple, yet interesting animation. Okay. So what we don't want is to have this black good job sign underneath. I can actually remove that at any point of time, yet it's important for me to remove it on the very at the very beginning of uh, this animation. Why? Because it then it's not going to be visible within this entire movie. So I'm going to remove this good job here, and as you see, it's not visible. It's not visible anymore. Okay. So now all we need to do is, as before, press GIF creation, and see the result in my email. So, and a quick information about sending e uh, GIFs through emails is like, um, just be mindful that GIFs are stacked images in the sequ sequence, so they might be a little big. Uh, I mean, in like you know, just be mindful of how much megabytes you're sending with a GIF. So, if you're using ILMS or just uh, you're creating a GIF to send uh, through some like Messenger or, or Slack. Or anything that you use to communicate, yeah, then then it's it's much easier. But yeah, just don't <laughs> uh, clog someone's uh, email with sending too many gifts. Just just just. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can go crazy with experimenting that way because actually those animations can be done in seconds, and the way we communicate is that we create them quite often and we just send them and but what we do is being mindful of the size of the message we try to use this setting here so let me show you you have an option to choose the resolution of the gif and it's in export here here it is gif resolution right oh, <laughs> so i went crazy <laughs> with high resolution of the gifs usually the resolution is 512 to 384. Right. So that's what we suggest you to do, unless you want to have something of a high quality for some reason, yeah, you can go with this setting here. So how about that? Three GIFs almost in no time. But of course, Explainer Everything allows you to do more sophisticated Things. So let me show you how you can bring some pieces of existing content to life in a form of a GIF. So I'll bring to the canvas something that we used recently. What is it? Hold on. I'll just find a picture. Oh, here it is. Bring creativity to every subject with Explain Everything. This is a special information for distinguished educators about a possibility to use Explain Everything. What I would want to do is those hands, uh, that's the beta version, those hands, yeah. <laughs> I want to animate that part of my graphic here. 
and I'll show you how to do that. So now, as you see, this is just an image and I'll change the background of this image so you see exactly the division between objects. So this is an image and I want to animate those two hands. So what I need to do is to take those hands out of this image, right? This is just a flat image. So I'm going to use cut out tool and use this mode of selecting elements just to cut out those hands from the image. Well, you can consider that advanced um, tool while it's actually not. This is something that is hidden in the options. Usually people select using this default mode, which is rectangular selection here. I'm just using this one. Going crazy, I could use this precise cutter here. No one uses it, really. <laughs> no one uses it. But yet it, it still exists for you to very precisely cut objects out of the picture. So let's not do that for today. This is a fast and dirty GIF creation, not a precise um, image editing. Now, those hands are still imperfect. That's why what I'm going to do is to save them to the camera roll so I can use the image editor just to polish them a little bit. So I'll save them to camera roll. Cool. I'll use them in a second. In the meantime, I'm going to prepare my main graphic here because I don't need those hands now because I'm going to use my animated hands. I'll just overlay I'll just put an object on top of this of this graphic and previously border was in a different color but I want it white just like that. Okay, cool. Now I need my hands that I will animate on my GIF. So again, removing background, that's quite straightforward. Okay, got my first hand ready. Now, another hand. Removing background. That's okay. We can remove that. Now, what I would need to do here is to improve my graphic just a little bit again using the color picker to select a pink color and improve the graphic here. That's a dirty trick, but it's quite fast. And as you see, you can, you can improve those elements in just seconds. So we want those hands to do that, right? But as you see those objects, this is the fourth and final example, so we'll go crazy with something more sophisticated. Those objects, as you see, if we do it like that, this is, this is not ideal. What we want to do is those hands to appear in, this, in the circle, right? And only in the circle. So why don't we try to um, uh, play puppeteers, say, uh, um, and create a mask so the heads come out of the uh, of, the, of this um, circle and only are visible in the circle. So that's a bit more complicated, but we can try to do that. So what we would need to do, simple and dirty solution would be to create an object here with the color. Uh, that, we, that the background, uh, with the background color. So let me try to use color picker here so I can now select this object and make it in the color of a background. And as you see, this object right now is above my hand. So I can actually do yeah, that's going to work. We don't need to do anything more fancy. However, it's going to be hard to move those hands. So I'm actually going to add sticks to those hands so I can move them easier. So this is going to be a puppeteer's stick. So this hand is will be on top. Sorry, my mistake here. And never mind those errors. I'm using beta version here. 
you won't see those, those notifications on your explainer routine. I'll group those objects so I can use this hand with this stick, right? And again, another stick to control a second hand. And as before, I'll take it to the front, join hand and stick together. And one last thing I need to do, Kuba, that would be taking this object to the front, right? Right. So now we have those two hands. And we can do this animation of ours. So we can also try to do one more thing. We can lock the scale. So when moving those hands, we don't change the scale of the hands. So what you can do is to select all objects and within this menu, lock scale. So now those objects will stay as they are and we can do this animation when recording our video. One important thing, we might want to see the frame of the movie again. And you can display uh, on-screen guides. Okay, they are, they should be visible now. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so that's the animation we want to do. These are the bounds of the screen. I'll move out using the stealth mode of the zoom tool. So if you look here, I'm using this ninja mode so I can zoom out and still see this red frame that shows me what is going to be recorded on the video. So maybe even this alignment will make it easier for me to be a puppeteer in this example. Okay, ready? Let's record. I'll, I'll, cap, I'll catch first object with my two fingers and second object with my two fingers and I'll do that. Hey! And that's about it. Let's rewind and play. Yeah! So if you think that, you know, I used some time to prepare myself. These were like seven seconds. You can trim the video by selecting uh, this part of the timeline. I use selector tool, that's the third from the left. And you can trim that by using this tool here. So when I play it, those hands will be immediately visible, right? So that's the short animation I did. All I need to do now is to create a GIF and put it to an email. That's interesting what happened. That was not ideally what I wanted, <laughs> but we can improve that one more time. So remember that if something goes wrong, you can always use this overwrite mode to record again. So I'll hit the overwrite. You have to confirm that you're okay losing your previous recording. That's what I did now. And you can do, hey. And that's about it. And let's create a GIF. Yeah, so that's the fourth and final example, how crazy you can go when doing your GIFs, doing this little tiny animation right. out of the still image. I think we can, we can uh, also cover one more that uh, might be interesting for some of you. Um, so for some of you, you've probably seen so many GIFs used uh, that were part of, like say, pre-recorded things like movies or right. um, videos. Say you've recorded someone doing something funny and you want to use that as a GIF that you've sent, right? You don't want to send a video, you want to have a GIF. You can do that as well. So what you, that's a very, very simple scenario mm -hmm. that we can cover very quickly. Uh, we just need a video file, which we will insert into the canvas. And then 
record that and uh, the interaction with the video and export as a GIF. So that's that's one of the, the scenarios we can, uh, that might want to interest you. Um, so why don't we show that? Okay. I, I think it's a... Cool. Do you have a specific video in mind? No, I don't think. We just need a, just like a simple video that, that okay. say we can use even that one that we've created. Or we can shoot one. Oh, we can create one. Yeah, yeah. We, can, we can create one. Okay. So let me try that. So I'll create... I think you're sharing your whole screen. That's interesting. Hold on. My mistake. Share. There we go. Yep. Guess it's better now. Yep. Okay, so one more time. White background and I'll add a new video to the canvas. Oh. Okay, so... Funny faces. <laughs> so now you see we have this video that we can turn to a GIF. So with videos, this is this is funny. You can actually loop videos here, so they play like in a loop, right? So what kind of animation you you have in mind? How you would want to? Oh, uh, I would just you know, make it full screen so that we are sure that okay. everything we on the screen is, is exported. So even more like uh, yeah, like that. Do you want to add a cat to it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and now we just uh, we just press record. Oh, I'll press record and I will put. All right. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I just pressed record and I'll put oh, as that, right? That's the recorded video that played in the background. But of course we can mix it with like, what's going on here? Maybe that should be thicker a bit. So I will remove those strokes here and choose a thicker pen. Oh, sorry. And record again. That's the mixed recording for you. What's going on? What those guys do live on a video? And um, if we if we now press GIF here, what we created will end up as a short GIF. What's going on here? <laughs> and that's there we go. That's how you can easily create GIF even using a video footage, as you see. All right, uh, yeah, 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 the suspense that <laughs> you throw such dorks. Yeah, yeah, we try to do, make it a little bit funny. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The weirdest part is that in this video, you two switch sides compared to the Zoom video. Yeah, you can switch the camera when, okay, so I, I think we can show that. Um, mm -hmm. So what we did, we inserted a video from, um, we inserted video from the camera of an iPad, right? So Yes. Um, you can do that. It, it usually you, you do that when you want to insert um, your own face in the video um, of explain everything project right so the way you do that you just add a um, and there, here are the new uh, new objects right so they come they are not pre-existing you are adding an object that's a new one right so if you add a new video here you'll see us here again mm -hmm. and Oh, this is the, the camera switch, right? And I think you can set it in settings, right? Um, if you select settings and go here, I think there is a mirror iPad, mirror screen. I, if, think, um, I think it's in recording. Uh, mirror yeah. front camera, oh, here it is. There we go. And if we add a new one, because this one is using the pre-existing setting. Um, oh, that's odd. <laughs> but I okay. believe the picture will be Mirrored. Oh, you yeah, see? There it is. is. Yeah, yeah. You sure. just need to record it first. And then, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking much here. <laughs> you too as well. Yeah, but that's that's the setting for you. If you don't want to mirror this camera, you just in the we have so many settings here. In the editing. Yeah, record. In the record. Yeah. Oh sorry. 
mirror front camera just here. Okay. All right. So, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, and we'll be uh, waiting for them. Um, if not, we'll, we'll go through some, well, if we have any more um, ideas, examples. Um, so Sven, thank you. The layers and layers of features are staggering. Such a great tool, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we appreciate that. We hope that it's not too complex. We're still working on simplifying the UI because we want you to like, you know, not be constrained by the complexity. So that's our goal. And yet we don't want to restrain you with like limited functions. So you can discover more and more by joining other our webinars. We actually run webinar, webinar now almost every week. Um, yeah, so next week we're going to show you how to uh, do the book report and how you can um, put the content in a different visual forms, um, visually expressing clarity and structure using unconstrained whiteboards. So I think that's quite interesting. That's next week. Yeah, and later on we have the Google Classroom integration. So yeah. you'll learn how to combine Google Classroom and, and explain everything so that they save you a lot of time. Um, yeah, so that, that's coming. Oh, yeah, and if you wanna see the webinars, I'm just gonna post it in the chat. Uh, and if you're watching, we'll, if you watch that on the YouTube or our page, this will be in the description of the, of the video. Um, thank you, Linda. Uh, yeah, we, we, we hope, because uh, the, the, the more of a statement than the question, uh, it's uh, that this looks pretty user friendly. Yeah, I mean, the kids in kindergarten use it, use that. So yes. if, if you want to check it out, that there's there are some examples already on our blog or in the app um, uh, from uh, Stacy Bernier, and um, he actually incorporated explain everything in kindergarten, which is crazy when you think about it. Um, so uh, yeah. We, we try and we hope that, that regardless of your experience with with interactive whiteboards or our apps, you'll you'll be able to use explain everything. There are some quirks, but they actually appear when you want to go in depth, like Sven and Karl Heinz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the story of Stacy. If you want to read more, just go to our blog. That's the that's the address. You can also find the link on the bottom of our page. And if you check the story of Stacy, this is quite remarkable because it shows um, undergraduate six years old kids using Explain Everything with templates. So this, there's a video showing fantastic things that kids can do with Explain Everything, like learning their literacy skills. So I lost the frame here, but this is basically the scenario that Kuba was referring to. So here, I believe uh, they were using the simplified version of UI, right? Oh, yeah. So we have this Probably. simple UI option here. With bigger buttons and less options. So yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. New users and, and younger, younger users are, you know, um, uh, have, well, it's not so. Extent, extensive? Yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, but then again, we don't want to limit yourselves. As you see, the, the options are there to do any type of crazy GIF videos with or without cats. And that's what we like, that's what we use, and that's why we, what, what we encourage others to use as well. So we have a question that's not really connected to GIFs or yeah. X, uh, but just a quick question. I sent uh, web links to two colleagues yesterday and both got an error code. When I opened my own link, it worked just fine. Could have that been because they tried to open the links on devices where they didn't have access to explain everything on. No. So it should work. I, I think we can we can, uh, we can can show you how um, this, this is supposed to work. If it doesn't, when um, then we'll, we'll uh, reach out to you and, 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 and talk about why it may, well, it could have been some sort of bug, but mm -hmm. let's hope that it's not the case. Um, so if we have a recording here, right? And yep, if, if we... 
if we select the recording and let's say create a web video link, web video link out of this recording. So I, I think that didn't show up in the in the feed. Can you do that again? Um, yeah, really. Yeah. Sorry. So I'll do it slower. So by the the, the option to create a web video, web video link, it's a. So you oh, can. You, oh, you do that. Okay. So you can press here to create. Oh, that was. I cannot hold this button t uh, for too long, but I'll show you what it is. So it's here to create web video link. Yeah, there are two options you, you have. You either or, use the, this one or the, the one at the bottom. It doesn't really matter. This one is... It does for me now because yeah. I have like five slides with different examples that I showed you. That's why I want to create a web video link out of just this slide. And that's why I use this yeah. option here. But you can create web video link from the top right, as you see here, and that would create uh, a video out of those five slides. But we, we just we we're just using the, the button on the bottom just because we want to have the, on this, this this only this recording. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do that now. So what happens is that project uploads to the cloud, and you immediately see the code. Right, and here's a very important part, right? Because uh -huh. that's the because you you may share the code. Um, and then um, say go out of this uh, of the screen by tapping cancel, right? So that's the first part where where things can go wrong. Yes, um, exactly. Because if you tap cancel, um, you will cancel the web video link creation, right? And you don't want to do that. Yeah. So, it, but from your um, scenario, I think that's not the case. Um, so once you tap done, so I'll just copy the link and I'll tap done. So once I open my browser, and I'll just put a browser to explain everything, and use the link here, the video should play just fine. But um, as you've probably, there, there's a short text uh, when you create a web video link, is that um, after we create a video, explain everything servers um, need to uh, spend some time on creating the actual video. Um, it's not immediate. Uh, depending on the length of your video, right. it mm -hmm. will take more uh, or less time. It, it, it depends how much content you have there and what's the right. um, what's the length of it. So if this took like two seconds, but if you have like let, let's say one hour long video, it might take even twenty minutes to convert. So maybe maybe uh, that I'm I'm guessing right now, but yeah, but maybe it, it was that if uh, the video. If you send it immediately, it might have been compressing, right? Um, but you said that this was an error, so... Um, Those th things do happen, so let us know what's the, what's the code and we, we can investigate. Yeah, sometimes. So... Right, sure. And here's the link copy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think... Because there are no permissions for VoIP video links, right? No, no. I don't think so, no. Okay. And the video plays as a video stream, so it plays on every device. So it was not a problem with a device. Yeah, De definitely. It, you should be able to share your links with anyone and they should be able to um, to play that video regardless of their device. Um, and to be honest, uh, problems with videos are very rare. That's why I'm, I'm surprised, but please share the link uh, to us and we can investigate if there was a problem or not. Yep. All right, let me check if you have any questions, any other questions. And we encourage you to ask questions. We're here for you to answer all of them. All right, so simplified for younger students sounds good. Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. the, uh, in, the, in the explain everything UI, I think we can show that. Sorry for just uh, jumping uh, back and forth. But, oh, there we go. Um, there are options of changing your workspace. Um, and in this workspace switcher, you can select three, currently three workspaces, which is one of them the standard. So you have access to full all of the features that I explain everything offers in the project mm -hmm. screen. And the other one is presenter. So you want, might want to use that when presenting, explain everything. So yeah. there's a draw tool, eraser, laser pointer, and slide selection tool. So that you're just presenting, you want to have uh, as much space for you to work on a slide while presenting works great when uh, say you prepared a pdf inserted it to explain everything and then just want to present it and highlight um, or annotate those 
um, those things, then this is this is perfect as well. Um, because in in reality, when you do that, and let's let's put something in to the canvas here. I'll just put one slide. Uh, which sorry, I'll just put one slide to the new project. Um, and when you're presenting a ready-made project, you don't want uh, any content creation tools. And that's why this presenter mode allows you just to highlight and draw on top of your slides. So that's, that's the ideal mode for presentation. I'll just put one slide to the canvas. And when I trigger this mode in here, presenter mode, yeah, you can do this, remove, and use the laser pointer to point to elements of your slide. And that's basically what you need. Right, and the third one is the simplified version. Yeah, um, that's the one. So the presenter mode doesn't feature the recording tools just because you're presenting, that's, that's our yeah. thinking behind it. And simplified is just bigger buttons, less tools, and yeah, uh, seems to be working fine. All right, um, yeah. And if you have any questions, so please post them. Um, we still have four minutes, so we're happy to answer your questions. Yep. If you still have them, if not, we would be super happy if you could share your GIF creations with us. Yeah. So after this webinar, if you're successful creating GIFs, please share that. It's going to be fantastic to receive some of your work. Yeah, I'll, I'll write to you with, a, uh, with the link to the video of this webinar and you can always respond to, to, to that email with your creations. We're happy to see. Um, and if you agree, we can, we can share them with, with every, everyone and, and just to show uh, how easy it is to, to create a GIF. Um, but except this last example that I provided you with, those first initial three examples could be done in a matter of seconds, not even minutes, explain everything. If you're, if you, it takes a little bit, a bit of practice to go around, but once you know where things are and what to expect, you can do it like that. This is super easy. We, uh, I think we need to provide you with, with a quick hint. Uh, Linda, thank you very much, because uh, Linda said, that, thank you for a great webinar. Thank you, Linda, for coming. Thank and you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. But um, when you record a GIF, just remember to record a little bit more than you would usually record, it just so that um, every frame is recorded properly. Because right now, the, the way the Explain Everything works requires you to, to add just a little bit more of a recording in order to for the GIF to work perfectly. Just just as a uh, um, quick tip uh, that we didn't we didn't mention, but it's a uh, it's a required. Uh, well, maybe maybe not. It's not required, but it's it, it's not, uh, pretty important to remember. Yeah. And also another hint that we can provide you with that is that when you're recording a GIF, when when the GIF is rendered by Explain Everything, actually what is rendered is the movement. So if you want, let's say a, a moment. Uh, at, let's say at the end of the GIF you want the image to be still, you you need to remember that if you just re, uh, record a screen with nothing is where nothing is happening, it will be trimmed down, removed in the process of rendering. That's why you try try to keep elements of the screen moving so it will be captured during the process of GIF creation. If you really want to have something still on the screen, try to move something outside of the bounds of the screen and then it will render a still frame within the visible space of the movie, uh, but you still need to move something on the screen. That's the nature of how Explain Everything renders GIFs. Yeah, that's a pretty advanced that's, stuff. That's the you, pro you, trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just if you want to create something really, really... Uh, Complicated, I guess. Well, when you want to, yeah, very, very complicated guess. So you can and try to, but try to keep it simple. Under twenty seconds, you'll be good. Yep. All right. Thank you very much for coming, uh, and we're very happy that you come. And well, um, and next week. Yeah, we'll and, and enjoy, and make sure to send your creations to us. As I mentioned, that would be very. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, just don't, don't kill our mailboxes. Yeah. And we love cats. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for coming. See you next week on the next webinar about the book reports and all happy. We'll be happy to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you very much. See you. See you.